And uh, we are live with a surprise broadcast. I am your host. <laughs> Oh, Clyde. Mark Goldberg from Mark Vlogs Watches. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, even though nobody has yet, but I'm sure a couple people will accidentally wander in here. And uh, my buddy over here is uh, Clyde, uh, the, the rancher. And Clyde, that's a very famous photograph that you're showing right now. Yes. Isn't fortunately, fortunately, it's kind of cut away. It, it doesn't show the full thing, so I think I can get away with showing it now. Okay, uh, Clyde, I'd like to buy a vowel, please. Can I buy no. a vowel? <laughs> no. God, you, you are. You, drive on. you may you may lease an owl if you'd like. <laughs> well, thank you for joining me. Uh, there are indeed people trickling and running into this stream as we speak. So first of all, I, I want to say, Clyde, maybe, I, try, maybe they should uh, try cranberry juice. And also, uh, actually, probably more like prostate re reduction drugs. I would like to show you and the people that I still have the cup. I am a proud owner of the cup. I will never do a limp-wristed toss of this cup into a into a dumpster. I just want to. I want to promise you, if I ever break this thing, it's going to be it's going to be with a hammer, and it'll be it'll be a proper and manly. It'll be a proper and manly job. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that you're with me, but don't make me rub the mug. Okay. So, I'm, here's the essence of what I want to discuss tonight, uh, Clyde. And, and, and I'm not entirely sure that you're the right guy for this, but you are my, buddha, my buddy. You know, you're my Bubba, my Buddha. I, I just find that you're not you're not the most compassionate soul, and I feel like my soul needs a little massaging right now. So, you know, see see what you could do to help me. I feel like right. I need a little therapy. Your what needs a little massaging? I need a little therapy, Clyde. I do, and and the reason is is well, let's go ahead and do the quick fist watch check. And uh, on my wrist right now is a Zin, but this is kind of like a lie. This is the oh. Zin one hundred and four. But the uh, the reason that it's a lie is it's not even set. I just pulled it, you know, out of the watch box, and uh, I would like to show you, Clyde, what I've been wearing nonstop for uh, like a, um, probably a month now. You know, that's not a that is an attractive watch. Well, see now you're 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 helping already. Already, I'm glad that I invited you here. I feel like you know. It, it, you might be the you might be the guy who can who can tell me it's okay. I feel like I need a hug. I need a horological hug. I need to be told that it's going to be okay, because Clyde, I am I am known far and wide as a Rolex apologist, a Rolex fanboy, a Rolex suck up, and I think all of that is true. I, I mean, if oh, I it were definitely to definitely is true by not by leaps and bounds. There's no, no we have a, we have. That. Listen, I, I'm going to want to hear you uh, call me a suck up more, but first, let's get this out of the way. Blue shirt, Buddha! Mark Goldberg! <laughs> Thank hey, you, Rancher. Blue shirt. Did I catch you with like gum in your mouth or a Ritz cracker or something? Uh, no, just uh, swallowing a gulp of water. Well, as long as you're swallowing. James Kahn says Clyde is compassionate as a rattlesnake. And I, I, you know what? I don't disagree. Sometimes, you know, you need that reality check. But Blue Shirt, here's my problem. I'm What's a Rolex that? guy. You are. I'm stuck on. But I'm st I am. I am. But I'm like, I'm completely stuck on this watch. And I'll put a Rolex on. And then uh, I'll whip it off like two hours later because I, I kind of like want this monstrosity back. Mm -hmm. it's, it's round. It's like a tuna can. It has little tiny T Rex. Look at look at look at its little tiny T Rex lug right there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like a little tiny T Rex, you know, little teeny weeny little lugs. But I think okay, here's here's what got me about this watch. Here here's what here's uh, what has captivated me about this watch uh, is uh is it's 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 so accurate, guys. It's it's incredibly accurate. Like there's just not an automatic on Earth. That is this accurate. This thing is running like plus a quarter second every other day. You know, something it, it self regulates. Do you know every 10 seconds it checks itself and it goes, Ooh, I got to slow down a little. Or, Ooh, I got to speed up. So it's deadly accurate. And it has the day and the date on mm. there, which is kind of, you know, a little covered up. But anyway, what's, what's wrong? Tell me, guys, is there anything wrong with, you know, just 
putting your favorite brand into the closet for like a couple few months and just trying on a flirtation with a, you know, with a whole new brand. What, what's happening to me? Is this okay? Um, no, I actually think that's perfectly fine. You're exploring new avenues. I, I mm. think you're, you're proving to yourself that you're not really a watch snob. <laughs> Last time I explored new avenues, Clyde. <laughs> it, it resulted in a giant midlife change. <laughs> yeah, no. Why so do you, I have you, this. Also, you, why do you taunt me? You, I know you <laughs> taunt me. I'm, you're, 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 you're holding bait up. You're wanting me to jump <laughs> like, like a Doberman. Okay, I'm well. <laughs> all right, well, to, to, I appreciate that. You know, to clarify, guys, what, what Rancher is talking about is, is I made him promise to be good <laughs> before bringing him into this live stream. So I, I know I'm making it a little hard on you, but uh, the reality no, no, is no, 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 no. <laughs> you do your best, Clyde. The reality is, is that, um, yeah, no, I, I, I want, here's, here's what happened. I started looking for a quartz watch, but it couldn't just be any quartz. It had all sorts of parameters in there. And mm. um, blue shirt, you're a very knowledgeable watch guy, so you tell me if you can think of many watches that meet the parameters that I'm about to give you. All right. Quartz. That's mm -hmm. easy enough. There's a lot of quartz. Yep. With a, a but a quartz diver with a clicky bezel. Okay. Mm -hmm. so bezel. Got it. Got it. Mm. Has to have the date. Well, a million of them have the date, but here's the rub. Mm. Here's the here's the one little weird extra complication Ooh. that knocks ninety eight percent of the watches you're thinking of out of the running. Mm -hmm. The day, mm -hmm. the day, mm -hmm. because it turns out very few, very few quartz divers or very few it's quart, very few quartz watches at all include both the day and the date date common the day complication very uncommon in quartz not sure why you know Maybe because it sucks a lot of why why yeah no why? no no it's yeah. uh, one one watch that i have in my collection that meets all those parameters Ooh, what what do you have the q tomix don't tell him okay all right here okay you, you, and i have that also but now let me go another step further and this is extremely subjective, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but that isn't a POS, okay? That isn't a POS, because I tried very hard to like the Q Time X, mm -hmm. but um, I should throw the following additional mm. parameters in there. I said clicky bezel, and that's just a friction fit. True, true, true. Okay, fair enough. And, fair enough. and I forgot to mention, it has to have at least good loom. Excellent loom. This has amazing looms, but it has right. to have at least good loom. Mm -hmm. And the Q Timex does, doesn't, yeah, you know, just doesn't, no, doesn't fill the bill. And it's it's small, mm -hmm. and uh, it it's an it's a it's a hair puller. And I took it off that bracelet and put it mm -hmm. on rubber. But you know, then it's like an eighteen millimeter wide, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. lug. So the the so then it disappears on. Yeah, it just I gave it to my son. Actually, I had two of them, so I gave one to my son and one to his wife. Now they have matching, and they liked them. Okay. Mm. But I, it was the equi I pulled a Hisham Habib. I gave it. I gave it to the gardener. You ran it over <laughs> yeah. with a tractor. Yeah. No, a that's a fair. Thing. Actually, well, a little bit. Okay, I have a I have a zero turn with like a sixty inch you know blade on it, so that that's something. But at any rate, guys, in the comments, tell me, you know what what else do you have now? Salty Paul, you bring up a good point, mm. which is why do I need the day on a diver? How long are you going to be under the water? You He's know, I actually have, I have a I have a world time diver. <laughs> Like I could be like 30, 50 meters under and all of a sudden have a burning desire to know what time is it in Abu mm. Dhabi, <laughs> you mm. know? So it, it, it's really not so much about actual diving, which I haven't done since the nineties. It's about the aesthetic, you know, really the, uh... Clyde, are you playing the drums on your desk? Um, no, calm down not on my desk. I know, I know it was you, Fredo. I know it was you. Didn't you have like a world time ball at one point? Clyde, stop! It's it's terrible in my ear. I got the I got the cans on. I do. I still have that watch. 
Um, it has a rotating bezel, but it's an internal bezel, which I don't like as much because you can't just reach down and like start playing with it. Well, anyway, when I got this watch here. So mm -hmm. why, why can't you just start reach down and start playing with your. Um, hey, hey, hey. Rotating. Hey, I do promise. You promise. So what this has is it has a certain feel of quality to it that took me a little bit by surprise. Now, one of the parameters that I gave all the people that I said, find me a watch with all these characteristics that I just named. Mm -hmm. The final one that I said was, and it's not a Seiko. Because mm -hmm. I was real tired of the Seiko aesthetic, even though I had mm -hmm. never seen a tuna, never really handled a tuna before. So I had them take Seiko out of it. And I was left with a couple choices, but very few. Damasco is one. Mm-hmm. That they make a watch in this category, but it's surprisingly expensive mm. for a brand that I like know nothing about. And I didn't really feel like spending two grand on a, you know, on a, on a, on a, on a, on a maybe, you know, what about that uh, toilet Oak that you uh, posted on WhatsApp today? Does that have a day? So that's good. It's a, it's a G it's a G shock. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, none of the, none of the proper G shocks have a turning bezel. Mm -hmm. And, they all have, they all have a little bit of loom, but then they have a button for the light. And right. what's very weird is there's just something about loom where you don't have to push a button, but it's just there when you glance at it that that I like. Right. Marathon has a day date, says Andy T, and they do. I have it. It's the Marathon JDD Jumbo Day Date, and it's about 500 millimeters across. <laughs> 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 I should have brought it upstairs to, you know, I do have one. Um, and I just never wear it because it's a little bit like wearing, you, you know, uh, a pie plate, you know, on your wrist and, and mm. um, bad, but it's not bad. And it has tritium tubes, which is kind of cool. But the thing is, is that it's not, that's an automatic, right? It's an automatic now. And my, my real problem has become that I really sort of wanted to go quartz because, okay, if when, why quartz, why, why quartz? I, and I think it has something to do with my OCD rancher blue shirt. Do you guys have the problem of constantly checking the accuracy of your automatic watches and adjusting them when they get X out of whack? Yes. What's your, where's the, where do you draw the line? Five seconds, 10 seconds. How far out of whack does it have to be before you're going to like reset it? Um, usually between two and four. Plus or minus, right? Doesn't mm -hmm. matter either way. Yeah. Clyde, Clydesy, how about you? I know you're muted, but are you there? Clydesy rancher. Can you hear me? All right. Well, he's gone. Right, to I, do don't, a I don't draw the line. I just walk it. Mm. Okay. A little Johnny Cash reference there for those of you too young Indeed. to know. But Clyde, what, what do you think, Clyde? You know, is there a point at which you're checking your watch or you don't really care about the accuracy of it too much? Don't really care about it too terribly, 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 terribly much. I mean, you know, if you want, if you, if you're that, if you are concerned down to the second or two, less than a second to get a freaking chronograph. You know, I, you mean a chronometer, right? right? What's a cr chronograph got to do with the accuracy of it? That's just a complication. But like, you know what, Clyde? I think your attitude is healthy, honestly. Between Blue Shirt and me, you have the healthiest attitude on timeliness, which is plus or minus. You know, if it gets to the annoying point, fine. Um, yeah. Blue Shirt, I my parameters are worse than yours because you're mm -hmm. plus or minus two to four. Mm -hmm. Plus or minus two to four. Well, if I'm... Plus, I'm okay with plus two, mm -hmm. but I'm not okay with minus two. Mm. It's okay with me if the thing is... So what happens is I wind up on the Watchville app three times, four times a day, <laughs> checking the accuracy. Been there. Been and there, I wish I was, that. <laughs> I, 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 I wish I was kidding. Yes, because, you know... Well, you know, Clyde, you're a lawyer, so you're billing by 15-minute increments, and a 15-minute increment for a lawyer is like, you know, hey, you there? Okay, see you at lunch. Okay, bye. Click 15 minutes. You know, mm -hmm. lawyers are notorious for you know mm -hmm. not worrying about the time too. Mm -hmm. But oh man, I I'm I'm like weird about it and and problematic, and then I just get too. And if I wear a quartz watch, mm -hmm. I I still check it and like daily, 
but just to reassure myself that it's still fine and, and it always is i mean maybe maybe once a week i gotta pull the crown out for one second and then push it back in and i find that a bit soothing uh now, Salty Paul is asking about no Grand Seiko day date divers, and they do have one. It's a spring drive, yep. and it's really accurate. Yeah, yep. it's 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 deadly accurate. It just doesn't have the day of the week on there. And the the one it has one thing. It has the benefit of kind of like a cool hybrid movement. But like this watch, I could set this watch down for three years. Mm. Pick. Pick it back up, pull mm -hmm. the crown out. By three years, I'd probably have to pull the crown out for 30 seconds and then push it back in and it would be perfect. The spring drive, you know, you got to wear it or, gotcha. or, or because it's, it's got a mainspring. Right. So you can't just, yeah, try to measure it over a month and then you'll get bored and forget the whole concept. I, I never forget. I never get bored. I'm mentally ill in this particular area. Or you're anyway. No, sorry, or an elephant. Or, I don't know. I just can't. I can't stop. Um, <laughs> Muggsy says I'm a loom pervert, and that's probably true. I do love the little tubes on the ball watches. Um, those, those are really nice. I have a ball watch day date that I like a lot because it's got tritium tubes. It has the day. It has the date. Clyde, you might like it because it has the day the date at three o'clock and the day at like 5 30 you know it's like off center so okay. they're not together at three but it's an automatic watch it's big it's really heavy and it's kind of scratchy so i just i try to wear that when but once in a while but then i end up just taking it off and the q timex it does it, it it's you know for for a really cheap punky little watch you know it, it it it's it's a good watch if you it can is. like it i just try you know um austin made a really good video where he was like repeatedly jumping into the swimming pool wearing mm -hmm. the q timex and uh it was fine so even though it's only rated to like 30 meters 50 meters you, you clearly you can abuse it and swim with it and shower with it and it should be fine actually do you know what's rated to 200 meters Mm, the the Samariner, <laughs> no, or is that or is that three? What what is Klein? It's three, yeah. yeah. What's your, your new watch for two hundred meters? Don't you? Excuse You're, me. You, you know what's rated for two hundred meters? Don't you? Are we talking about your new acquisition, Klein? Well, among other things, yes, quite possibly. Is that what nice. is that what you're? Is that what you're referring to? Well, why don't you, Clyde? Tell us what you got. In fact, can you? I changed my avatar. Oh. my avatar changed. Oh, for... you you did do. Clyde did is do. now able. Clyde can now time anything up to forty five minutes. That's uh, right. Beyond forty five minutes, you're in trouble. <laughs> well, do, do you really care about anything past forty five minutes? I mean, come on now. Or... Clyde doesn't even really care. Clyde doesn't even care if he can read the time. He just likes watches, which is one thing I really respect about the rancher. He doesn't even he doesn't even care if he sets them. No, no, I'm like I'm like your Daytona. I can read the time on this thing. You know, it, it well, it's bigger, right? It's it's yes. 41 millimeters. And Clyde, you know, for the for the punters it out there, Clyde's date. avatar. It has a date, mother. A Clyde's date. avatar is mm. yeah, but I don't care about the date. I make care it, about the make day. him big, Mark. Can I do Ugh. that? Let me. Let's, how do I do that? Uh, solo layout. Let's see if there we go. Oh, solo mio. Oh, solo mio. Congrats, well, it's very, Congrats. It's, it's, it's very pretty. nice, Clyde. It's pretty. I think it's I think it's pretty as hell. Now, yeah. the, the funny part is, is that um, I got I kind of I, okay. Remember the remember the advice I gave you about the recent Rolex releases from twenty twenty. Hmm. No. Yeah. Am I well, what about it? You know, Bruce Williams designed this watch. He told them a year ago to make this exact watch, and he did a mm. Photoshop, you know, mock-up of it, and now they've done it. I, I think they should give him one. Mm. Uh, George J. says, Clyde, can you live with the snowflake hands? You know, actually, the snowflake hands, it's the hour hand is the only thing that is troublesome on it because it really does take up room and you know, the, the registers are not huge anyway, but, um, 
it's just, oh my God, it's such a pretty little thing. You know, snowflake hands, well, actually, Blue Shirt, let me get your opinion on snowflake hands before I, what do you think? I like snowflake hands. I, it, it's the skeleton yeah. hands on, on Omega that, that drive me crazy. It was I'm the rancher, absolutely with you. Yeah. It was the rancher who had the problem with the snowflake hands, but uh, I'm glad he's, he's overcome it. He's come around. I mm. um I like the snowflake hands, and I guess it's Marmite. You know, you either like it or you don't, or you or you really severely dislike it. But I I like it quite a bit. Um, well, he I do. Like I also spread. <laughs> I also have a problem with skeleton hands because it's just harder to read the loom on them. Yeah. But uh, Tudor does very nice loom, and and this is a really nice looking piece. Thank you. And um, I, I I I mocked you for the forty five minute register, but actually. What they've done is they've avoided snotting up the busying up the dial with three registers, which mm -hmm, means you mm -hmm. wouldn't have room for a date, and it just gets too busy. I'm slowly so, coming around to mm. uh, really liking dual register chronos. I Same was always a, a, tr a three register guy, Same and I thing. still love it on my on my Speedmaster. But but I'm I'm coming around to this. Same thing, except for the round uh, except for the round part. Hmm. 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 Well, anyway, I think I think that that's a fine looking watch. The, if I were to, if I was going to come up with any objection to it, it's really not actually aimed at that specific piece, which is a nice one. I have a a, a small objection really for Tudor, which is everything is becoming a black bay. Like they're mm -hmm. knocking off. They're they're like eating their own creativity by issuing yeah, every but, sort of a. Well, yeah, but like, Ling like was horrible. doing. Go ahead, like, uh, God. By the way, who's got the who's got the window open? Because I can hear I can hear myself in the background. I consider okay. myself so. Uh, I consider myself <laughs> so. Man, 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 man. On the face, face of the, of the earth. earth. <laughs> by the okay, um, but Omega does the same thing really with the Seamaster, or at least used to. Everything had Seamaster on it. It may have had 0 0.5, 0 0.5 meters or 0.3 meters of water resistance, but it still had uh, Seamaster on the dial. Right. And Breitling did the same thing just recently. And they, they, they threw Navi Timer on, yeah. on, on, on every single freaking watch they put out. Yeah, fair point. They even put out a Navi Timer without a chronograph, which is like, Correct. you know, kind of ridiculous. Kind, kind of ridiculous and I, I think what that represents is basically when they get their hooks into something that's working and that's selling um i i think they 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 stop taking risks and then they just want to mine that vein of gold until it ends um but the problem is is that the whole range of watches then begins to look much like you know one begins to look much like the other how many different versions of the black bay can you possibly buy and i'm a little angry at myself that i kind of am intrigued by the silver one <laughs> you know like yeah. that silver one is real pretty no real Mo pretty. Carbide actually has a good point the watch looks very much like an omega speedmaster racing panda with two registers and a date window it's larger mm. at 44 millimeters, but it looks very similar with the spare your 900 coaxial movement. Okay, Mo, Mo but yes, yeah, the very similar. And but here's also what's kind of nice. It's got Mojo. It's got like four <coughs> Mojo. Bless it's you. got Speedmaster Mojo. Yeah. It's got um. It it doesn't have the coaxial, but guess what? It goes in and out of a cuff, unlike. <laughs> I, I love a cuff roller. I'm sorry. Well, what's funny? Ron, the shrink is blasted, <laughs> but he says hello, folks. Well, well, Ron, you work very hard. You're entitled to a cocktail now and again. Dave, yeah. Dave Aronson asks what I think of the Royal Oak, and he lists off a couple of models. And honestly, I'm not an AP guy. Aldi Mal P. Gay. I can't even say it. Um, I'm not an AP guy at all. Um, but the 15202 is the is. jumbo. That's the uh, the very mm. thin uh, 39 mil. Um, yeah. Two hander, and then the fifteen five hundred is the modern uh, iteration of the of the Royal Oak, the automatic. And Mo, um, I've also looked over the Omega Speedmaster Racing quite a few times in the past. And I have I have eyed them. I have eyed them quite. Yeah, you so, eyeball them. Well, you you do have a very nice. Um, you you have yourself a nice AP Clydesy. Which one is it? The offshore Navy things. There you go. 
on so, the bracelet. I'm just not an I'm not an AP fan. I don't know why. I just couldn't tell you. The right. 925 is pretty, but no bracelet killer for the 925 and gold version. I agree. Um, both of those watches come only on straps. Uh, either, yeah, and the the 925 comes on like leather or fabric. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay, and, and little Marco has a point there. Yeah, it has to fit under the cuff because that's the first. That's the first thing you do is you 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 pump that fist in and out, in and out, in and out mm. of the cuff. Is it going to go under the cuff without any problems, or is it going to bump? If it bumps, mm. well, it bump. you know, I, that may count for people who wear a suit. But like, I'm in business attire, <laughs> you know, like right now. Like, so I, I don't I care what. Is that a fake Marco? I don't care. Who, who okay. knows? Don't care. Doesn't matter. Gotcha. E either way, uh, all, all are welcome here at the table. Um, but what I was getting at is the 925 doesn't have a, um, a, a sailcloth strap. Well, it doesn't no. have a bracelet, but it should at least have a sailcloth strap. Agreed. I mean, you're not going to want – I, I, I don't like – divers on leather even though it looks good right. but you can't even take a shower with the damn thing and so it mm. kind of defeats the purpose i think um, so oh they had the 925 call. and they said oh this retired judge i'm like god damn it larry castle motherfucker well that's yeah clyde clyde had a shot at a 925 <laughs> he, he, as he beat lady. you to it huh rancher oh yeah he did he did we have Somebody this little unofficial thing going however however Hey, hey, Judge, I still have the poster. I still have the po – anyway, go ahead. Well, you, you did manage to score the, the chronograph and, and the panda at that, which I think is the hottest one. Agreed. But, um, you know, the problem with taking a fabric strap into water is when you come out of the water, it takes forever to dry. Mm. You know, like nylon will dry out a little bit quicker, but those fabric straps, they take forever. So I really don't understand why they didn't come out, at least with a, the, the 925 on a, on a Tudor sailcloth. Yeah. So that you could uh, stick fat. Marco again pointing out the Omega Speedmaster, Omega Racing the most ne neglected decent watch. On yeah, I, I I would agree with that. I, yeah, mm -hmm. totally. Bugsy says there should be a nice rubber strap available. Rubber. You know, rubber or ru rubber or rubber. At, at, at least, or at least sailcloth. You know, um, speaking of this topic, um, away. Well, so, sorry. You know, there is there there I. I say I've lost my Rolex Mojo because I'm not wearing them all that much, but I am collecting them. Um, I've been in line forever for a Panda, um, and, and I would like to get that watch. But, guys, did you see the meteorite? The, the meteorite? The meteorite Wowzers, Daytona? That is so freaking gorgeous. Freaking what gorgeous. Oh, and yeah, that's going to be so easy to get, too. Right. Now, Nobody the, will have the, it. Uh, it, what a gorgeous watch! Well, be, here's, what, here's, here's what sucks about this: I even think these fucking pa these freaking pandas are going to get hard to get because um, well, the story with that is the AD, the AD got them on Friday. He said the person that does inventory, they're out. They called in sick. They're not going to be back till Monday. And it's like I'll pray but, for her. I'm, I'm telling you, Bruce, I'll pray for her speedy recovery this weekend. <laughs> You know, but do you know, Clyde, what Tudor does? Tudor introduces something, they dribble a few out, then they close the supply, they make everybody want one really bad, and then just as they start to hit a little bit of a premium on the resale market, they flood the gates. You know, they open the floodgates. So they're, I they're think pulling a, in, they're pulling a three quarters Rolex. You know, it's going to be really difficult to get that watch for about six or eight months. But, you know, a year from now, I don't think anybody's going to have a problem getting one. Okay. So well, if maybe. I were you guys, if I well, it, it's kid. How hard is it to get? Can you get a um a black, a black a back blade? <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> black. Can you get a blue black blade? Black, fuck it. God damn it. Can you get a blue one, Clyde? The 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 thirty nine millimeter blue. You know, which was in super tight supply. Yes, you can uh, get you know, them you, now. And now you can get them. But remember Correct. what happened for the first few months? People were paying premiums for them. Correct. You know? That that's what they always do. I made a whole video called "How Tudor Tricks You Into Buying Their Watches." And guys, I've got two. I got a Pelagos and I have a Black Bay Burgundy. So I like the brand. Oh, yeah, but so, if you're gonna if you're gonna buy that, if if the first thing that is on your mind is resell, then yeah, no, you should be looking at it. it. Unless of no, course, you're the, unless of course you've got the first one in your state. <laughs> well, you know that which is typically you, except for now the lawyer beat you to it on the silver. But um, anyway, yeah. um, 
I, I, I think that that watch is going to be hard to get for a good six or eight months. And then after that, they'll, they'll just, you know, crank them all out. So Agreed. I don't know. I don't know. Cause I still think anything Panda right mm-hmm. now is, is hot. Panda, Panda is hot right Panda. now. Yep. Yep. Agreed. All of that is driven. And all of that is driven by Rolex and the pent up desire to get one, which nobody can, except for maybe I'm gonna, I think, I think I'm gonna, but let's, let's shift gears for a second. Of the of the meteorite dial ones, there's mm. there's four versions. Two are white gold. One is white gold on an oyster flex, mm-hmm. white gold on a white gold bracelet. Then you got yellow gold bracelet and watch head, and then Everose mm-hmm. bracelet and watch head. What do you, what, what do you white guys? White gold oyster flex. Like? Win mm. win Ooh. win. What a sexy Me. watch that is. That's about half well, right. <laughs> Yeah, you'd have to you'd have to you'd have to go to Little Saigon to find more wins. I like the I do like the white gold one the best of all of those, and but I'm just not big on Rolex rubber. I mean, I know they stuck titanium in there, so they like, did. It's just it's still rubber. Mm-hmm. So um, and and the difference in price between the rubber and the oyster flex bracelet in white gold, it's like almost $10,000 difference, about nine, yeah. 9,000 and change. So you yeah. pay a lot of money for that white gold bracelet, but that's the one yeah. that, I, okay. that I, I, right. I hope I can get, I hope I can get that one, especially because in white gold, I feel like that's a watch you could wear out and about without it screaming, you know, I'm gold, I'm gold, I'm gold. Oh. You know? yep. Yep, yep. So when I when I yeah. showed up on Monday, by, the AD is like by basically saying, you know, I had five people, five people asking me about this on on Saturday, about that panda that you bought. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna it's gonna be that way for a while. Like for example, you could flip that watch for a reasonable profit right now. You wouldn't be able to. I don't think you'll be able to do it in a year though. Probably not in a year. You Probably know, not. in a in. You remember the blue, but, the blue. But, nobody okay, nobody yeah. can get the blue. Now but, walk into the store. How many but, blues but, you want? But, but, mother, but, but, but. You'll be, able, you'll, my be able, you'll be able to get out of it and get most of your value back, kind of like Agreed. how you used to with Absolutely. Rolex. How, you, like, how Rolex used to be. I, I agree. I so agree. Actually, they, and actually, with now, right now, with tuners like the new Rolex, ideally, the mm-hmm. best thing, the best way to approach it is to get a slightly used piece after they've been, they've been out a year. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with that either. You just have to be patient to make that happen. AH says if they put ceramic on the full gold Daytona, it would be perfect. I'm surprised they didn't do that this go round at Watches and because Wonders. It would be and cheaper. The, yes, it would. It would listen. A a ceramic bezel would set off the gold really well, and it would be a lot cheaper than the ceram- than the gold bezel itself. And the, a lot of people worry about scratching that gold bezel up and the ceramic you know, would make a lot more sense from that standpoint. So I'm now, Ron, really surprised they didn't do that. Now, Ron the Sheik is kind of, he's arguing, he's taking a differing approach to a lot of it, the con- to the overall consensus. Mm. Um, okay. Well, you know, look, Omega have put out a few special editions, like the Snoopy that are popular, extremely difficult to get. Um, and then they're not only going to hold their value, but are going to skyrocket. But I don't actually think um, that that holds true for the majority of the Omega line. That being said, Omega seems to be, I'm, I'm especially curious about Blue Shirt's opinion on this. Mm. Blue Shirt, it seems yes. like Omega's getting their act in order. They're getting their house together. Are they, they're not dumping onto the gray market as much. They're not discounting as much. Are they coming out with as many special editions? Is Omega finally getting their SH together? I believe that they are. I believe that they are. Um, They are definitely trying, which is which is a lot more than you can say for Rolex at the moment. Tudor and Omega are 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 moving forward. Rolex is taking lateral steps, and. Bugsy is correct. Tudor is looking to fill the hole that Rolex left in the watch enthusiast world. Mm. Most of us are thoroughly angry, you know, at Rolex. <laughs> we're just, you know, we're just angry. And that's because 
you need a really special relationship with an AD to be able to count on getting a Rolex. There's always somebody that finds the golden ticket, you know, that walks into an AD who says, oh, you want a sermon? Look, I got one right here. Here, take it. Never. I don't know who you are, but we've got go a golden go ticket. We've got a yeah. golden ticket. Sorry. You know, so that does happen from time to time. But like more often than not, um, you've really got to know somebody at the AD. And, um, and, and I do, for example. But it still takes... You know, when you ask for a challenging watch, th the problem is the ADs, even if they even if they like you and they want to fulfill your order, they just don't have that much inventory of Rolex. R Rolex have controlled that to the point where they have just left a bad taste in the mouth of most collectors. And to complicate that matter, the, the shortage of inventory has caused some ADs mm. to take shortcuts and act in unethical and possibly illegal ways, you know, to, to try and capitalize on the few bits of inventory that they do have. So I don't know why that is grantor unmute yourself when you can behave. Uh, and I just don't know why, I don't know why, you know, why that is because you're, you're always going to have somebody willing to shortcut the system, you know, sure. and absolutely. I, I've got word on a Chicago area authorized dealer. Mm -hmm. It's not CD Peacock who's being sued for similar shenanigans. And it's definitely not the AD that I do business with, okay. but another, AD, but another AD All right. who uh, re reportedly, and I'm not going to release their name because I haven't checked this out, you know, <clears throat> to a deep enough level, but is, um, but I have enough detail to pique my interest, <clears throat> selling fully stickered Rolexes mm. above MSRP. Fully really? Stickered. Then yeah. they would. They yeah. are seriously <clears throat> jeopardizing. If Rolex finds out, they will lose their AD. Well, you would sure think so. Um, and there is obviously precedent for that because just to you know to. To sort of bring the, the the peanut gallery into this, the um, the Rolex demands that the AD remove the stickers from all watches before giving mm -hmm. them to a customer, mm -hmm. so that the customer cannot flip that watch unworn in stickers and um, thus inflating, you know, feeding well, the frame. The, the, the card. Now, I have seen. I have actually, at one point, I actually had the freaking email from Rolex. Yeah, and we, the, I remember seeing that email, Clyde. And it was it was an instruction to their it was an instruction from Rolex in Geneva. Yeah, you know what Which, happy, you know what happy memories just flooded into me, Mark. What's that? Oh, Stickergate. Stickergate. <laughs> happy times, happy times. Yeah. Well, back in the days when you know your your AD might at at their discretion give you the the watch and stickers. You know, I I've gotten watches and stickers. And, uh, but that just doesn't oh, happen he, anymore. Mine made sure they stripped all the stickers off. I'm like, oh, what the hell? Go ahead. Mm. Mm. Are you talking about mm. the tutor? Yeah. yeah. They're destickering tutors? Yeah. Indeed. And, yeah. Uh, well, let me, let me ask you a question, Clyde. What form of payment did you use? Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking you put cash on the table and they took it off the table before they destickered the watch. <laughs> they, they learned their lesson. But, um, you know, anyway, th there's a report that this AD is selling stickered watches, which is a that right right there. That's that's yep. going against the Correct. the their agreement with Rolex, which, you know, is one issue. But the second issue is above MSRP. That's a bigger now, no -no can, even than the stickers. Right. Unless yeah. unless it's a used watch. In which That's case, the when they buy used inventory, they could sell it for whatever price they want. But Correct. what if they have a shill? You know what I mean by shill? Friend, yes, friend, shill oil. A friend of the a friend of the family, let's say, who's and they sell it to that individual. They don't mm -hmm. de-sticker the watch, and mm -hmm. then they give that guy his money back immediately, and then resell the watch as a used watch. But that means the the card would be registered mm -hmm. and they would have to send a photograph of that card and transmit that serial number into Rolex. So they would be basically selling the same watch twice close together. Rolex has to know if that's going to, if that's happening with any regularity. 
Oh, by the way, a shout out to my fellow COVID survivor, Detroit, Detroit Spartan. I think he even I think he even had it worse than I did. Yeah, yeah. Well, brother, good to, to see, see you, brother. Detroit. Good to see you, Detroit. Well, glad, glad you're with us. He says his AD allows him four allocated watches per year. That's a lot of watches. That's yep. that's that is that's uh, a bunch. You, are, you sir are a whale. You are. Yeah, a he is. Guy. He's a bit Detroit's a big time. Uh, and I can't a big believe I'm agreeing. I'm yeah. Everything Mark. Everything the person identifying himself as Marco, formerly he identified himself as Prince, the artist. Now I think he. Mm-hmm. Now I think he identifies himself as the watch artist. But anyway, um, one you know, one watch a year from the AD should be a Rolex mandate. You know, I'm catching myself really just agreeing with mo- just what he's saying. You know. Well, you know, I, I think the comment is correct here. The ADs want fewer customers that have bigger accounts. And uh, I think in general that's true unless you're, you know, l- unless you're just lucky enough to make a friendship with the AD. So um, the, this is – now, look, Omar, he says uh, he got his SD43 from the AD, and they didn't withhold the hang tag or the bezel protector. I, I don't think I don't I don't, I'm, I don't even know that they're supposed to. I think you're entitled to your hang tag. I'm not 100 percent sure about the bezel protector. Some of the ADs are going to withhold that, but others of the ADs will be able to give you the bezel. They should all they should all have the hang tag in the book. Um, um, but the bezel protector, the bezel protector, I think that's all. Some of the ADs, some of the ADs will give you the coffin uh, in which it was shipped. Which it was shipped. Actually, that plastic coffin, coffin that the uh, styrofoam insert. You know the, because you know the, the, the Rolex green box. That is not how watches are shipped to the AD from Switzerland. They're shipped in a plastic coffin, and the uh, the boxes are shipped separately. Mm-hmm. Steven is asking, can you guys hear me? Yeah, I can. Steve was asking. Oh, yeah. Steve was asking. Uh, okay, what do you think about the new uh, pistachio Breitling? I think I th- I, preview, I kind of view it as the guacamole Breitling, or the avocado Breitling. Um, it's nice. It's nice. Uh, nice looking watch. I like the aesthetics. I think they still caught on Nava timer, don't they? Steve's Q Timex was destickered. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, what I think is the um, some of these brighter, slightly wilder dials, I mean, I'm kind of in favor. Uh, last year they came out with the OP41 in, 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 in the Stella, in those bright Stella, you know, Easter egg colors, and I really like those. And then this, uh, the, the, gosh, who, who got that palm tree motif? The 36 millimeter H, was it? Uh, oh, is that the, what that is? I thought it was. Yeah. yeah. As I was saying on Bruce Williams' stream, I have a Hawaiian shirt with like that exact pattern. So I think that's kind of fun and cool, but I just think it's too small. So I didn't really care for the yes, you know, for for the specific model that yeah. they offered it on. But I I think that that every once in a while Rolex will surprise us by doing something a little bit fun. Um, the, the problem is, is the stuff people really want, they've just got it clamped down to the point where they're driving their collector customers like us away and they're forcing their ADs to do things that are, you know, illegal, uh, immoral, un- unethical. And yet some of the ADs are just completely above board and, and, and just making it work, you know? So mm-hmm. hats off, hats off to those guys. Cause it's getting harder. Well, gentlemen, I think this is a good stopping point. I want to thank Clyde, the rancher in blue shirt, uh, for joining me here. It was therapeutic for me. I do feel a little better that not, neither of you thinks that uh, I've gone off the deep end wearing a Seiko tuna as though it were my girlfriend. I mean, I just can't take it off. No. No. Mm. It's, 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 no, I'm not going to say what I'm going to say about watch knobs and Seikos. The thing is, is that Seiko can get to be a bit of a bad habit. I own way too many of them. Like, I, I do like the Seiko Turtle, but you should have, like, one of those, maybe, or two. Mm-hmm. I think I have four or five of them. I mean, yeah, I have that, too many. That, of them. That's too many. That's too many. Well, they have all these different dial colors. I understand. <laughs> you know? And they're easy and then they to get. Came out with, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, they're easy. And then they came out with, uh, so it's a, it's a quick way to scratch an itch. I want a new watch. Oh, look, they came out with a king turtle now. It's got ceramic. Oh, look, it's got sapphire. 
Um, oh, look, it's got a green one, a blue one. Like, so, you know, I, but yeah. before you know it, like I turned around and I now have like two or three thousand dollars worth of Seiko turtles. That That's too much. You know, I need to sell that stuff. Mm. Well, the boys are complaining about my mic. I think something must have happened to the quality you're, of you're my okay, sound. You're okay now. You you were sounding a little, uh, a little uh, fuzzy before, but you're you're good now. Thank you for uh, that. And uh, Detroit, Detroit says G Shock. Well, yeah. Uh, you know what? I went from having like five of those down to two, and I should have kept it there, but now I'm back up to three. Five identical turtles. Yes, I do know what it leads to. <laughs> it leads to madness. Like it, 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 Ron, you know, Ron, I really, I, I Ron, now, Ron, uh, if you know, if you super chat twenty dollars, Mark will stay on for another hour. <laughs> no, I won't. I'd really like to know, though, Ron, if this is a treatable. You know, is watch disease treatable? Why do we all have OCD, or do he's we just still, say we have OCD? You know, like what? He's still, he's Ron, still laughing. For He's still laughing for my uh, more wins than Little Saigon. Yes, he liked that one. Yeah, well, you know, I, I would ask Ron for his professional opinion, but but he's blasted, so yeah, know, it would it would probably not it's be loud. appropriate. But, but what happens is, whatever I do, I, I I tend to jump in with both feet. Okay, so if I if I like a turtle, I wind up with four or five of them. If I like a G Shock, I wind up with five of them. At one point, I owned eleven Rolexes all at the same time. That's not like that's not a good idea for somebody who's not a multi multi millionaire. <laughs> not a good idea. Probably not. Probably not. No, no. Yeah. Thank God I was able to, you know, mind you, the, the nice thing is you can sell Rolex with like one or two phone calls. It's really easy to, to move yeah. on to the next home, you know? Mm -hmm. By the way, did you ever I mean, sell that uh, Breitling, that super special, really limited edition Breitling? No, I still, <laughs> that's another thing. I'm really awful about selling watches. Like, it's such a pain in the butt. I, I like selling Rolex because I make two phone calls, they're sold. You know, um, you want to sell anything else, you have to do like a little effort. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, I I still have the, I still have the that rainbow. You, you know what, Blue Shirt, you should sell it for me. We should, we should talk. We could do that. So, you know, let's talk about it. It still has a couple stickers on it. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. And it's the black, it's the black. So do a little exploration on your side and then let, mm -hmm. let me know what you think. Okay. It's the, uh, it's the, it's the black one. It's one of 250. Mm -hmm. So it's the rarer of those two. You, you know what? It's really... real quick? What's that? You mind if I have a Clive stream real quick? Uh, you mute yourself, but yes, go right ahead. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to make him behave a little bit. Uh... <sighs> Um, but it's Do it funny that that you um, you know you find you you wearing your 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 Seiko more and more and more, and I'm just the opposite. Uh, I for the last week haven't taken off the bluesy at all. Just, it's just yeah, but you're you're like so connected to that watch. Like I, I know that you'll once you'll once in a while put on something <laughs> else, but that, mm -hmm. that's your that's mm -hmm. your daily that watch. Yeah, yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. It is. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, all right. So, look, here's what I don't know. I don't know. Did I lose my Rolex mojo or did I put it on hold? Am you I in Rolex hold. permission? You put it on hold. <laughs> Is it going to come back hardcore? Or... It will. Like, what's, what's... It's, been, it's been a solid month with the tuna. Where's the point? Where's the point at which? I... <laughs> Where's the point, blue shirt? Where's mm. the point when I when I can say if it goes on this long that it's my new thing? Mm -hmm. Is it one month, two months, six months? Where's the point? See, it's it's hard to say because uh, I do know you, and I do because of you know uh, the the WhatsApp group. You post sometimes two to three watch pictures a day so i know you rotate throughout the day i, I do so i i'm i'm not really worried about this current seiko infatuation that you got um because um sooner or later you're gonna you're gonna all of a sudden miss that rolex feel on your wrist and you're gonna you're gonna put that james cameron on and you're gonna be like yeah okay 
You know what? I, I did. I did that yesterday. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did that yesterday. I mean, I literally, and and I think if you look back on WhatsApp, I probably posted a picture of it. Um, and I wore it for like a half a day, mm -hmm. and um, and I thought, gee, you know, I'm, I'm I think I'm over the Seiko, like, and the Seiko isn't going to lose time, gain time. I could leave it alone for months and then come back to it. Right. And then uh, I I started to miss it and had to run back and you know took off the James Cameron and put the Seiko back on. So I've just never honeymooned or crushed mm. this hard on a watch. Even, even on the, um, you know, like on the, on the Hulk, mm -hmm. I had a solid, I had a, I had a solid month of love with that watch before I could stand to take it off. Right. Um, but I felt it waning at the end of the month where I started to miss some of the other ones. I'm like at least four or five weeks into the tuna and, once in a while, I want to take it off, but only for a couple minutes at a time, and then I and then I miss it. Ah, well. Boys, it's time to cut this off and join, you know, Ooh. get back in, into the real world. I want to appreciate you, Blue Shirt, and even you, Clydesy, for joining me. Clyde, I would say you behaved yourself at a level 8 out of 10, and that was much better than I expected, so thank you for that. You're Gentlemen, in, your, parting, your parting shot, Clyde, go ahead. Um, and thank you for joining us, Blue Shirt. <laughs> your final words? Uh, congratulations to the rancher on that uh, beautiful Tudor panda. It's a nice one. And uh, join Punters Talking Watches. Uh, wh when does your channel what, say your channel name again? Blue Shirt. Watch Talk with the Punters every Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern. By the way, it's a great show. I'm officially naming my watch Sexual Harassment Panda. And they actually talk watches. On that note, thank you guys for joining.